Welcome everybody to this new session of the Network of Resources webinar series. I'm Federico Rondoni and uh, I'm here today on behalf of the Network of Resources, an ESA uh, European Space Agency initiative. And uh, together with me today there are Antonio and Simone from MIO and Antonio uh, will uh, present us the ADAM platform in a bit. In the meantime, uh, I want to remind all the participants that this uh, session is part of the uh, webinar series that we are delivering as network of resources to present all the different services that are available through the NOR. And uh, the Network of Resources is an ESA initiative aiming uh, to allow people to work directly inside the cloud environment, uh, to work with data and uh, analyzing data without uh, uh, the need to uh, download them locally. This is uh, a new session, as I was saying. Uh, is it possible also to uh, see all the previous sessions that we had inside the NOR portal, but we'll see this at the end of the presentation when we will also go through the portal and through the portfolio to understand how is it possible to access the different resources through the network of resources. Uh, I want to remind you all that this uh, uh, webinar, the webinar is recorded and uh, uh, it will be later available uh, on YouTube and uh, inside the NOR portal. And at the end of the webinar, uh, you will receive uh, a survey that we kindly ask you to fill out to let us understand uh, how we can improve uh, and uh, uh, what, what did you like about the webinar. Uh, if you have any question, uh, please write them in the chat and we will address them uh, at the end of the session when uh, after the presentation of Antonio, we will have a small Q&A session. So uh, without, uh, let's say, saying anything else, I leave the floor to you, Antonio, please. Okay, thank you, Federico. So uh, welcome, everyone. I am uh, uh, Antonio Vecoli. I'm the head of uh, um, training and the user support unit at, uh, at MIO. And uh, I want first to thank NORT for this opportunity to, to showcase uh, Adam and, it, and its functionalities to, in, the, in, this, in this webinar. So, um, well, let's say, uh, first of all, um, what we want to, to, to show is something that uh, goes toward uh, the, the intention to, to, to face one of the uh, most important challenges that uh, the EO domain, the EO community is facing so far. So um, let's say um, the, the, the way to understand how we can, we can uh, use at best satellite data and the in general Earth observation data, sorry. And the uh, Earth observation data um, in the in a, in, a, in an era when um, Earth observation data, the amount of them is uh, rapidly increasing, and um, uh, users can find uh, the way to, to to access the data uh, um, in uh, let's say in in, in different uh, in, in different modalities, but uh, data uh, are represented with uh, many formats with when in many formats in when may many ways to, to to access them, and it is not only uh, it is not always. Uh, easy to, to understand uh, how to do it in the most efficient way, especially if we, we, we need to, to work with data uh, on a massive scale. And the concept of, that, of Adam is to implement uh, um, uh, a, a version of the digital earth uh, with the data that are presented in, uh, with multi-resolution and uh, uh, in a way that the users can find, visualize, and uh, uh, let's say make sense of the vast amount of georeferences uh, data uh, in the most effective way. Um, it is important to clarify that uh, uh, the Adam platform is not producing or providing data uh, by themselves, but uh, it is, uh, it is uh, the, an efficient way uh, to connect the user to the biggest existing uh, data facility, facilities, uh, and you can see some of them uh, in, this, uh, in this slide. Um, 
a very important feature that is uh, available in Adam uh, is that the user can interact with the data uh, with, the, the, with multiple approaches. So uh, there is a, an, effic uh, an efficient and user-friendly uh, graphic user interface. Uh, there is a way to, to process data uh, with the scientific, uh, uh, in a scientific way uh, using a um, um, a pre-prepared Jupyter environment, and then there is the the possibility to to have a machine-to-machine -machine approach uh, with the um, with the use of a, um, a non-purpose API or with an OGC interface. Here you can see, uh, let's say a. A general architecture of how um, the Atom ecosystem is structured. So we have basically three layers. One is the data layer uh, that let's say uh, get catch the data directly from the official data sources. Uh, this data layer uh, then interacts with the processing layer uh, that enable uh, the interface and the full system to provide operations like. Uh, um, and just partial subsetting, so both in time and in space, uh, mosaicing, or for example, band combinations, or uh, let's say uh, statistical uh, processing of the data. And uh, these two layers, the data layer and the processing layer, uh, interact. Uh, um, uh, um, let's say each other uh, thanks to the existence of the user interface layer uh, that connects uh, both the data with the processing uh, area and at the same time you can see on top uh, the authentication authorization accounting layer that uh, of course uh, enables the user to uh, have a, um, let's say a personal and uh, um, Private account on the uh, on the platform, and th this layer also enables to the possibility to create groups of users that can access a specific uh, section of the of the catalog, so specific data sets that are present in, in the catalog. And uh, this layer is also responsible for the quotas and the billing of the system. Uh, as I told you, uh, Adam is not providing data by themselves, but uh, gets the data from uh, the official providers. Here you, you can see just some of the uh, data that we can uh, provide, that we can, uh, we can make available for the user. So we have not only, let's say, uh, classical Earth observation data, like the the data coming from Sentinels and uh, from from Copernicus. We also have the possibility to manage. We, we can manage um, projection and uh, forecasts. For example, the one from ECNWF and uh, or uh, other kind of uh, uh, data. For example, the one that we can directly uh, get from the GRC uh, catalog, like the population density. So we can we can we can manage uh, data that are very different in the way they are they are processed and uh, um, let's say made available for, to the user by the the, the official uh, um, by the official providers. So using Adam, the user uh, as only to to uh, um, exploit. They are, they is, is on account on Adam, and there is no need to, to get one different account for each of the providers that, that, that are uh, officially uh, disseminating the, the, the product. As I told you before, there are three ways to, to get the data, and uh, uh, this try to, to, to meet the, the, the needs of uh, different kind of users. So uh, the, 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 um, the Adam Explorer, the, inter the graphics interface, um, is more addressed to general users or to users that are more interested in, the, in pro uh, getting products and results and, uh, let's say, images or maps for communication, while the Jupyter environment is more specific for uh, scientific processing for, for researcher and uh, let's say uh, um, expert users and uh, while the Adamapi uh, API uh, is the let's say uh, support programmatic and uh, let's say uh, more uh, um, science information approach to, to, to the data. 
Here we will we, we show uh, three different uh, kind of uh, use cases that uh, um, can be, let's say, exploited uh, with the Adam interface or with the Adam technology, with the, other, with the core technology of Adam. I will start with the showing you uh, something about the, 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 the official uh, Atom Explorer, so the, the, the platform we, we provide to directly to, to our user. And uh, here you see the, let's say, uh, what you can see when you first arrive on the, on the, on the platform. Uh, I will show you two different cases. So one about uh, CAMS, uh, CAMS data, so uh, modeling, uh, we talk about modeling, uh, data models of uh, uh, air quality forecast, and uh, a small example on how to, to uh, let, let's say, uh, use the Adam uh, Explorer uh, jointly with, the, with, the, with Q, QGIS. So I'm passing to the, um, to the platform here. This is, uh, in, let's say, uh, the, the, the home page of when, that you uh, can reach when you want to, to first meet Adam. Then here you can go to, you can see uh, some description of the uh, features that, are, that, that describes uh, what is Adam and how it, it operates. And then on top, you can directly use this button to, to, to enter Adam. Uh, this is what you see when the, you, the, the user first uh, entered the Adam home page, so you have the, uh, a login operation. If you already have an account, you will just put your, your credential here. If, you're not an, if you have not an account, you can go here on register new account, and you can follow the, 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 the procedure. So this is how how it works. So you can now log in. So the user will, you can see the, uh, what will the, the user will see uh, at his first uh, access. Here we have different, uh, you can see some four different, let's say, way of uh, uh, using Adam. There are four elements here, one here, here and here. We start from uh, this element that is basically, basically something about the visualization of the map. Here you can change different, uh, let's say, base maps on the, uh, on the platform. Here you can change the projection of your, of your visualization. These are, these are to uh, the the possibility here you have the possibility to uh, modify the elevation of the map because the in the 3D uh, modality you can uh, of course go to the say you could you could go the, here in the 3D mode and modify the uh, elevation here on top and yes this is just for visualization but uh, the most important features of Adam are uh, what you can do uh, actually with the with the data and with the geometry related to the data so here you have the section with the uh, geometries that the user can uh, create by himself so uh, you can create a, a rectangular bounding box or an arbitrary polygon or importing a polygon from uh, directly from the local machine, so and that would be your or a KML or a GeoJSON file, and uh, whatever the user will will uh, import or create about the geometry will remain in this list uh, even after the current session. So uh, when the user will access the the, the platform in, in, 
in future sessions, you will find always the the the, the geometry that he has used. And of course, you can you can reuse them, or you can you can uh, delete what is not needed uh, anymore. This is the part of geometry. Here we have the part of uh, data set. So uh, the, the the let's say um, a user that uh, uh, has never access to the to the to the platform. Here we would have a, an empty bucket. In my case, I have just prepared the the, collect, the data set we are going to show. But the user could, uh, uh, of course, in, add more data set to his to his uh, to his bucket, clicking on this uh, um, on this button, and uh, uh, a, a catalog will be open. And this catalog will contain, of course, all the data sets that are, let's say, uh, um, provided for uh, the the kind of the the type of user that uh, um, is is uh, uh, currently uh, on the platform uh, let's say the user uh, the the uh, when the user um, is re have, uh, get his own uh, registration um, it is initially just a, a, there is initially a basic configuration of the catalog so uh, there are not all the uh, data sets available in adam that are uh, uh, quite a large number, uh, but we, for the basic user, there is a, a, a strict, a limited uh, series of uh, um, data set available, and then we will talk about it uh, a bit more in, in, in deep later. Um, now the, I will show you how we can actually use uh, the platform. So uh, starting from the um, from the camps here. When we want to active um, enable one uh, one collection, we have to uh, press on the button here. The camps PM10 is a European one, so you will see that the data won't cover the full globe, but just the the a European uh, in European area here. Uh, this is the data on the uh, different. Um, uh, 29 because we, we we are talking about forecast uh, we can find for example uh, an example on a different uh, date here we have a time bar we can go back or forward in time in my case I will go to February and I will look at uh, the 18th so we get the date of 18 or oh, 18 of February and in this case, we can see that we could, uh, for example, select one region on the on the active uh, area. In my case, I will uh, enable. I will try to subset the data uh, following the follow the polygon of Italy. So we can enable the polygon of Italy that has been already uploaded in the uh, in the area. And you will see that in a few seconds you will have the data only limited to the uh, country border of uh, of Italy. Um, as I said, with the, with the data cube approach, so with the core technology of Adam, there is not only the the, the possibility to go into the um, let's say from the global uh, and the full. Uh, spatial coverage of the data. We can go regionally, so we can. Uh, Subs the ge geographically the data uh, according to the polygon we want, but we can even go uh, to the granularity of the single pixel. So, for example, here I have already selected uh, yeah, the um, a pixel corresponding to to Milan. So I can enable the pixel corresponding to Milan, and in this way I will extract a time series on uh, over Milan. You have to say that the PM10 comes are hourly data, so you can see that the the, the data are uh, arriving hour after hour on the on the plot, and we obtain one uh, day of data uh, in just a few seconds that are visible here. We could change the the um, let's say the the extent of the of the um, of the time series in, in this area, and once we have reached the the the, the Temporal coverage we want for the data. We have two possibilities to, to to use this data. First one is just to get the image of it, so we can uh, save the image, uh, the, the plot as a PNG image, or 
with this button, we can, do we can download the data uh, in a CSV format. So it is a format that can be then reused for data analysis, for example. And this could be done also for other points. We could add more points here, and uh, we, we, we would get more plots, and we could then download uh, all the, 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 the plots and the time series we get. Of course, this is a manual approach, and uh, we would need a, a, a programmatic approach if we, if you, if we have to, to extract more points and for different uh, time coverage. This is, let's say, a, a way to, to, to use the, uh, Adam and the, the technology of Adam uh, with the um, data that are uh, coming from, from a model that is uh, um, about uh, uh, air quality. Uh, the other example that I want to show you is based on the Sentinel-2 data. In this case, you can see that here I have already prepared the, the, the Sentinel-2 uh, data set that we are going to use. And uh, we, we want, I want to show you uh, one recent uh, wildfire that is in the Arctic region of Siberia. And here I have already prepared the polygon that is, uh, let's say, uh, uh, including uh, this, this wildfire. And when you have, um, let's say, uh, a polygon here that is uh, been, uh, been already created, you can directly go to the area to the where the polygon is located clicking on this uh, on this button so you will be zoomed in this area then you can activate the polygon here and this is the polygon we are interested in and at this point we can enable the, the data set. We can move to the day we are interested. So I'm interested in the 24th of June. So we go to 24. And now we have to, to wait for the, for the data to, to come. It is not a, a, a true color image. It is a, and let's say a, a false color image that it is using uh, uh, the sphere bands of uh, uh, of Sentinel-2, and uh, uh, we, we, it is uh, let's say a band combination. Uh, it is an, an, an RGB image using four um, four different bands of the uh, Sentinel-2 uh, MSI uh, instrument. So here you can see we we, we have a, a, a very clear visualization of the uh fire fronts that are uh, uh, characterizing characterizing uh, these wildfires that is called uh, uh, an arctic fire because it is located you can see here at that uh, 67 uh, degrees of uh, latitude and here we we, we have a, a quick visualization of the um, of the image and we cannot perform other operation on an rgb image here what we can do is to download the data so we can download the data here we will get uh, a zip file containing uh, uh, in this case it could be Two days, not only the 24, because uh, we we when we open the the, the data set, we, we were already set it on the 26. So, so if there is a Sentinel-2 image on 26, we will get 24 and 26 uh, of June. This will keep, it will probably mm, keep some minutes to, to download. And uh, I can show you in the meantime what I, I already did for this. So the data is is downloaded as a JP2 uh, subset of the full dataset. 
and once you 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 get the um, the, the the product and the result in QGIS, then you of course you you are able to let's say. Uh, perform in a sort of equalization of the image, so you can know you will notice the difference between the initial image that is uh, the one we showed here. I, sorry, I don't find the the initial one. So you can you will see the, you are seeing the difference between the initial image and what you see now in the uh, after the equalization. But of course, with the, um, with QGIS, you can go on while uh, further equalizing the image and uh, changing the 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 the, the weight of uh, red, green, and blue in the um, in the rendering of, of the wildfire. And here you can clearly see uh, the all the fire fronts and also the the, the different area where the, the the smoke is coming from. Let's go back. I can find it again. So. And here you have the, the 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 image as we have before, and now you can see the difference once the image has been equalized in the in QGIS. In QGIS. So uh, with the them, you can get the data quickly and then download and then import them them in a uh, other platform where you can you can perform uh, more analytical or uh, uh, visualization processing. Then going back to to the presentation. Uh, a similar concept has been developed uh, not only for for Adam but also um, let's say uh, when you want to 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 we have seen that the um, I told you that there there is a limited um, list of data sets that are available for a standard user in uh, in Adam when registering to the Adam platform uh, but Adam is also uh, let's say taking part to the uh, network of resources and it is available uh, as a, a network uh, an old service so if you go to the uh, North, service, North service web pages web page you will find the uh, Adam in the portfolio and uh, in the uh, in the section related to to Adam uh, there is a, a section that is called collection and in the collection uh, in the in this part in the collection section uh, you will find all the all the data that, that are made available for nor and uh, once you 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 are using uh, adam in the framework of, of or in the framework of nor you can request uh, make a request to exploit uh, the data set that you are interested in so here you, in the uh, north page you will find uh, the full list and you can ask to 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 get those data made available in adam for for, for your for your usage um, a similar concept of uh, of uh, adam has been developed uh, for the esa uh, pdgs uh, activity so uh, let's say in this case we have um the PDGS stands for Payload Data Gun Sam Segment of uh, of ISA, and uh, ISA provides uh, a series of uh, um, let's say data products coming from Earth Earth soils, from third party missions, and uh, from uh, in other Earth, uh, other Earth observation uh, missions. And in this case, um, let's say we, we we talk about also long heritage missions, and all these kind of data are made available. Uh, in a let's say in a data access platform that is based on the uh, Adam technology and what you can do in this uh, platform is exactly what you can do in the Adam platform for the, uh, the, the data the data set we have seen so there is the possibility to enable uh, pixel based access uh, to extract time series uh, to do just uh, partial subsetting or event combination and all the the the, the let's say the data processing operation that can be um, performed on uh, on Earth, Earth observation data. Uh, as I told you, there is the possibility also to have a, a machine to machine approach or to uh, in, let's say uh, leverage. Um, 
um, scientific processing in an, an Jupyter environment. Uh, in this case, what I want to show you is what we have done uh, in the framework of the uh, capacity, capacity development activity for CEOs. And uh, I will show you uh, that uh, thanks, to, thanks to the data cube approach, if we wanted to uh, ex extract a time series over a country, uh, you can, in general, using the, the, the food product uh, and the, the traditional approach, uh, um, you can need uh, about 10 minutes while using the data cube approach, so directly extracting the data, the time series from the uh, um, data set, from the subset, subsetting, subsetted data, uh, you can save, let's say, more, about 80% of your time, computing time. And this is even more, let's say, evident if we, we talk about uh, uh, computing a change map, let's say an anomaly map uh, that is limited over, over a country. And in this case, uh, the, the, the processing is even heavier and the, 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 the computation, uh, the computational time and the computational power you can save is even uh, bigger. I will show you now uh, an example of it. Here, the 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 example I will show you is based on the SMOS. So SMOS soil moisture is one of the data sets that are available in the ESA PDGS data cube. And in this case, what we have done is to uh, this is the the, the data cube approach. So the is the advanced one. We have directly um, extracted the data, uh, not using the full uh, MOS uh, soil moisture product, but we have uh, extracted the, the, the regional data, the country data on the fly. So we have, this is the, 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 the operation, the, the code used to do it. So we have imported the necessary libraries. And using the Adam API, we have to define the, uh, the endpoint, so where we get the data, uh, the collection, and the, the, mm, the, the temporal coverage. And we have defined also the geometry we need to, to extract the data. Here are the operations to, to extract the, uh, let's say, um, the temporal coverage. The, the anomaly has been calculated uh, just for, as an example uh, on 20, in, in 2019 and 2020, computing the anomaly for the, 20, the 2021 uh, month of January. Here we have uh, extracted the data. And after extracting data, this is the one of the operations that can uh, take more time. We have uh, computed the, 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 let's say, the, the, the climatology, so the, the, the average values. Here we have extracted the data just for the uh, January 2021. And in the end, when after, uh, let's say, computing the, the anomaly uh, with a subtraction subtraction of, uh, of values. You can see here the, the, mm, the total processing time. And here we will have uh, um, the visualization of the map just for Italy. This is different from the, let's say, the traditional approach. This is this has been done in a traditional way. So the operation are done. You can see we are not we are not using the the the, um, the polygon at the beginning because we use the we we we, we make this computation on the full product. So we extract the data the data for the full product. We compute the average type, the average values for the full product, and you can see that extracting the full values, the full, the full maps, uh, uh, as requested, uh, five times of the, um, the, the 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 time we needed with the data cube approach. Here we have the processing time to to get just to one day, one one year, the January 2021. Here we computed the, the anomaly. Here we have the full 
anomaly get it for the uh, full uh, coverage of the map. And here again, we extract the the, the product on the Italian on the Italian borders along the Italian uh, the country borders. But uh, you can see you have seen here that the the total amount of the times that we need is much more larger than the one we I have shown you before. And you can look at it again here. So uh, using the data comp approach, we uh, uh, we have saved the uh, computational time and computational, uh, let's say, power because we used it for a, a shorter time. And just considering that this anomaly has been uh, calculated with only uh, two of the uh, two years over two years, so getting a longer climatology would request much more time. So. Back to the presentation, this is a different way to, to, to use, uh, let's say, the Adama technology. The last uh, use case I will show you uh, is uh, different from this one, but uh, we will show you how uh, the, the Adam technology can integrate different data layer to, to, to extract, to, to, to extract uh, useful information for, for a different, uh, let's say, field of study. And in case we are talking about hydrology, this is the the digital twin earth uh, for hydrology that has been developed uh, in collaboration with the, with ESA. Now we go to the web page. If I can, okay, it's coming. For the digital twin earth uh, of hydrology, we have four different we have five four different use cases that uh, uh, let's say show different ways to 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 exploit the data i will show you the what is scenario for flood risk assessment so what see what we see in this case is that uh, we have two different kind of uh, uh, um, let's say products that are jointly used there is a soil moisture scenario and there is a precipitation event so uh, um, two different uh, let's say um, products uh, we are using uh, at the same times uh, what we see here are some stations that are uh, marked with the uh, dots and for these stations uh, we have uh, definite values of soil, soil moisture soil mean soil moisture and mean precipitation uh, varying these values uh, uh, in the range we see here uh, we get different color of the of the of the dots of the dots of the circles and a different color uh, let's say represent a different risk of flood for the area for the uh, location we are, we are looking at. So, for example, here, if I would change these values to 0, 8, here, if I would, would go to, uh, let's say, this one, we see that, uh, 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 let's say, putting higher values of the soil moisture mean uh, of the, of the, of the, on, the on, on the area and the, also uh, putting a very high value of precipitation we see which are the 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 the, the location that uh, uh, immediately have a higher risk of floods and this is uh, of course computed that this this risk is evaluated uh, using the the the, the data set we are we are seeing and this is one of the way we can use the 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 data the the data set with the data cube approach of, of Adam. A different scenario can be found, for example, even if you look at the large scale water balance assessment. In this case, we don't have, uh, we don't see uh, there is not a, let's say, a, 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 a what if scenario, so we don't assess any kind of risk. But here we can see that we have uh, four, five different um, data set products that are represented. And this is the, um, let's say, um, 
an efficient way to represent anomalies and uh, mean values of the of these of these products you can see that uh, uh, in this case we have uh, we can have negative or positive anomalies and the the the, the sign of the anomaly depends will go along the, the the color of the um, let's say um, the gold you see in the uh, in the in the diagram we can go we can switch to different basins here so change to the change in the basin we have different of course uh, values of the anomalies so we can see which are the basins that on on the uh, on the period that is considered for this uh, uh, let's say um, for this simulation uh, we see based on the real data uh, what which are the the more critical aspect uh, in the in coverage temporal coverage that is indicated here so you can see here And the data are provided on the fly, so we we, we, we can change the basin and we get the data uh, readily changing on the on the diagram. And so these are we have seen three different ways of uh, exploiting the data using the 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 Avdan technology. So uh, going both in the spatial, uh, let's say, mo moving in the spatial domain and in the temporal domain. And um, yeah, thank you for, for your attention. Thank you, Antonio, uh, for uh, your presentation. Uh, we have a couple of questions already in the chat, uh, so I will read them to you. The first one is uh, how the different data projections are handled in the, da in the data cube when one wishes to use two different data sets coming with different projection projections in the processing. Okay, so maybe Simone? Uh, yes, I might answer that question so that uh, let's say in the Backend uh, services of uh, of the platform, uh, there is an option uh, to ask uh, uh, the target projection. I mean, to convert from the native that uh, could be UTM uh, APSG forty three twenty six uh, to the target one. Uh, that's uh, somehow what uh, uh, Antonio was showing uh, in uh, uh, in the web UI. Uh, we're looking at uh, Sentinel-2 that are uh, in uh, in UTM, but uh, uh, visualized uh, in the 3D uh, global uh, uh, with respect to CAMS that are already in equirectangular and displayed on the same target resolution. Projection, sorry. Okay, thank you. And the second question is, what is the data loss and which algorithms are used, are used for the consolidation? Uh, could you repeat, sorry, uh, Federico, the question, which is the? Yes, yes, sorry. Well, what is the data loss and which algorithms are used for the consolidation? Uh, I think that uh, Antonio mentioned a couple of times during the uh, presentation that uh, the platform is providing uh, an access uh, interface or let's say different uh, UIs and options for accessing data that are uh, distributed by uh, data owners. So uh, the quality and the variety of the data uh, rely on the uh, on the data owner itself. So in case you have an interest on uh, this quality information for CAMS, Sentinel, or any of the other uh, data, uh, you will be forwarded to the uh, official uh, documentation where you will find, uh, let's say, the proper answer. Thank you, Simone. Um, okay, we have another question. Is it possible to download data from DTE hydrology, for example, only the snow water equivalent information? Uh, let's say from the user interface, the web UI that Antonio showed, uh, the uh, 
uh, download and access is not enabled, but anyhow, the data are fully open and free. Uh, I think it's worth mentioning that the prime of that activity is uh, CNR in, uh, in Italy that uh, do apply this open policy. So I would recommend that to go in the, in the website uh, and uh, contact directly the uh, responsible of, uh, of the activity. And for sure, data are open and free. Okay, thank you. Sorry, we have a, a, um, a, um, let's say more details about the first two questions that were uh, that were coming from the same person and that were related related uh, one to the other. So the first one related to data loss was uh, um, was connected to the um, uh, the let's say the different data projections uh, handled in Data Cube when. Uh, uh, when someone wishes to use two different data sets. I don't know if this changes a bit the, the let's say, the perspective on the answer that you gave, Simone, or if it's the same uh, uh, situation and the, the, the answer. I would say, still, uh, just, just to complement that, uh, as when we do apply the reprojection moving from uh, one to, to another, the, uh, there will be, uh, changes into the value, so maybe that's the uh, reference. Uh, we usually apply the nearest neighbor uh, algorithm when uh, resampling and reprojecting, so to if we, uh, minimize the, the changes on uh, radiometric or thematic values. Hope this answers the question. So I want to thank again Antonio and Simone for uh, the presentation and uh, all the explanations. And I want to remind you that uh, is it possible to uh, reach us uh, by sending us an email uh, to the NOR email address uh, or directly to Simone and Antonio if you have any questions. And also that you will uh, uh, find a, feed a feedback survey at the end of this session. So uh, please. Uh, feel free to uh, fill it. And uh, uh, thanks again, and I wish you a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.